Joining us now to talk about the ongoing vaccination effort and changes to distribution is Dr. George Diaz. He is an infectious disease doctor who practices at Providence Regional Medical Center in Everett. This is in Washington State. Dr. Diaz, thank you for joining us tonight on News Nation. Before the break, we kind of walked folks through uh, the competitive nature of what we see happening between the states in getting this vaccine not only distributed, but then uh, trying to get it into people's arms ultimately. I think first off, where is the disconnect uh, to this point that we have 27 million doses distributed, 9 million doses have been received? Yeah, there's definitely been a disconnect uh, in the vaccine rollout. You know, there have been uh, varying amounts of vaccines sent to different states. Uh, they don't know exactly how much to expect. Uh, and more importantly, they haven't been provided the resources to actually do the vaccinations. And I think that's what you're seeing is a, a variation in the resources each state has. And so um, some states have, have been able to uh, resource uh, mass taxation clinics and, and those states that are able to do that and have the uh, resources and manpower to get those uh, clinics up and running will succeed. Uh, those states or uh, local uh, health departments that don't have resources or funding for this are, are simply going to struggle. Uh, and so what you'll probably see going forward, unless there's uh, additional resources provided by the federal government to do this, is uh, a, a disparity in states that can afford to uh, staff these clinics to get people vaccinated versus those that can't. Uh, and, you know, by causing a situation where states are going to be competing for vaccine, it'll be a, a situation of the haves and the have nots. I do want to point out that I listened to the entire press conference today uh, with uh, Secretary uh, of Health and Human Services, Alex Azar, and he did say if states wish to set up mass vaccine sites, we stand ready to help with technical expertise and support. So Operation Warp Speed, the health leaders at the front of this are saying, we're here, we're ready if states need help. Is that not being received? I think my question is, um, do we just need to get two parties in a room and come up with a plan? Why isn't that happening? Uh, I, I think there just needs to be a, a better national strategy for, for this process. So, for example, uh, the guidelines for who to vaccinate had previously been uh, left up to each individual state to decide how they would, you know, vaccinate different groups of people. Uh, at least now there appears to be some alignment where they're advising that anyone over the age of 65 or with a medical condition should be vaccinated. Uh, previously, they weren't quite that prescriptive, so uh, that's a move in the right direction. And then getting more vaccine out, it, I think, is also a move in the right direction. And I think those were recommendations that had come from the Biden incoming Biden administration. And I think, uh, thankfully, the current administration uh, has agreed to follow suit. So I think a follow-up to that is President-elect Joe Biden has said he'd like to hit, set a goal of 100 million vaccines in 100 days. Do you believe that with what we saw today pushing forward to the next phase, that that is a realistic goal for folks? It's certainly possible. I think that if we have a, a, a better a national strategy for vaccination over the next few weeks, uh, if resources are released to allow us to do these mass vaccination clinics uh, and we get reliable uh, shipments of vaccine to the states, uh, then it's, it's certainly a, a possible uh, a goal that I hope we accomplish. Uh, I hope you're not getting paged right now. I'm going to ask one more question, if I may. Uh, the secretary also said today, based on the science and evidence, people need to be getting the second dose of the vaccine on time. On time is the critical point there. He said ignoring that recommendation would be reckless. So my question medically for you, why is the timing of that second dose so critical in terms of how it works? Well, whenever we do any sort of treatment, we want to follow the guidelines that, that led to the data that that, uh, that led to its approval. Uh, and in this particular case, for, for example, the Pfizer vaccine, it's uh, three weeks after the first dose. Uh, that being said, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, we have record cases of deaths every day uh, and admissions. Uh, and I think that it's it's wise to try to vaccinate as many people as possible. Uh, we, we hope that we will have enough vaccine to give second doses on time. But if there's a, a little bit of a delay, uh, you know, by a week or two uh, to get that second dose in. Uh, I don't think that's going to be a, a major problem. And I agree with the plan to try to get as many people vaccinated as soon as possible.
Yeah, the feds are saying if you receive the first dose, uh, that offers incentive to the state and to the feds to send in more doses. It's important we get this shot in people's arms. We don't want it going to waste, and there are too many people waiting in line, Dr. Diaz, as you know, who want that shot. I appreciate your time tonight, Dr. George Diaz from the great state of Washington. Thank you.